everybody. The Flat Earth family. Taking a hike with the dog. Heading up through the mountain. And I thought this might be a perfect calm, quiet place to talk a little bit about um, why my nickname is Sunshine. Uh, it's not going to be a backstory on any of my supernatural experiences. Um, it's mostly, mostly going to be a backstory on some of the traumatic things I've been through with my family, my biological family, and uh, how that shaped my life and why I am the person that I am. Um, maybe give you a little bit better perspective on why I like to fight the evil in this world and look for the truth. You don't have to listen. I know not a lot of people are going to agree with what I'm doing, but it's my story and the people in my life affected me, the experiences affected me, and because it hurt, I feel I have the right to share. And I'm sorry, I'm walking through spider webs, so, and there's bugs, so <laughs> I'm going to be brushing stuff away from my face. Beautiful area. I'm in Pennsylvania. I don't know if you can see the trail behind me. And then that's where I'm going. Logger's up there somewhere. Log! Hey! Hey! Hey, buddy! Here he is. Oh, bugs are bad. Anyway, so I'll start off by saying that I um, was raised in a Christian home, pretty much out in the country. My dad was in the Navy, and I have one living brother, biological brother, and as we grew up, uh, my parents decided that they wanted to be able to help other children that didn't have a good family life, didn't have a family in general, and my parents became foster parents. And so as when I was little, we um, experienced having a lot of foster children in our home, which I absolutely loved. I mean, it was a, a good experience. It felt wonderful to be able to help children who didn't have a family that loved them or could take care of them. Um, children and youth asked my parents if they would ever be interested in adopting. And my parents said, uh, or no, I'm sorry, asked my parents if they'd ever be interested in watching or fostering babies. And my parents, not to be mean, said, you know, we, we would not want to foster a baby because you become so, so attached and Babies become so attached when they're very little and you can't explain to them why they might move on to a different home. So, a baby came up that was available because his parents did not want him because he had some physical ailments and those physical ailments included cerebral palsy and SIDS, which is stands for sudden infant death syndrome but my the children and youth explained to my parents that he would be available for adoption so we are very excited and ready to adopt this baby and he was going to become my brother and I's new brother so to make a long story short we fostered him from the age of six weeks old, right out of the hospital, as soon as he was able to leave the hospital because of his <clears throat> physical issues. We raised him as a brother. My mom and dad raised him as a son and took him to physical therapy. He grew out of the sudden infant death syndrome, which is a, an issue where he has to wear a monitor at night 
to monitor whether or not he stops breathing or his heart stops. He grew out of that and miraculously grew out of the diagnosis of cerebral palsy or else he was misdiagnosed. But with going through physical therapy and such, he was able to combat that and grew out of it. Excuse me, I got bugs biting. Um, once he was given a clean bill of health, unfortunately, because our court systems are very slow and his adoption was not final, his biological parents that in the past had uh, lost babies because the father had beaten up the mother, chosen to give away babies because they did not want boys, they wanted girls. They decided that they wanted him back. So we had to start allowing him to go on uh, weekend visits to see these people that he had no idea who they were. <clears throat> he had to start calling them mom and dad. And eventually we knew that the, we would fight it, but the court would want him to be with his biological parents, even though during one of these weekend visits, he came back to our house with a bloodshot eye. And I don't mean bloodshot like, you can see the veins, I mean bloodshot like when someone gets hit in the eye and their whole eye fills up with blood and he had a handprint on the side of his face. We took him to the emergency room and they said, it was like a full grown man taking a baseball bat to another full grown man's face. And it, we were not allowed to enter that into the court system. And his biological parents won. So we raised my brother till he was three years old. And after his third birthday, he went back or went to live with his biological parents. And we thought, you know, that this is what maybe God wanted, that it would turn out okay and that we would visit him. Sorry, I'm gonna get a little emotional here. Six weeks later, after he was sent to his biological parents' house, he was dead because they beat him to death. I'm sorry. I knew that that would make me emotional. So, at first we were told that it was a, he was in a car accident, when in reality he was just in a coma from being hit for so long that his biological parents decided that he wasn't coming to, and that they would probably have to take him to the hospital. And it was found in a court of law that he was beaten to death and he died from blunt head trauma and he had 86 contusions and bruises on his body. They went to jail and I think the, I can't remember, I was only 12 and I'm 36 now. It still affects me, so I think uh, the biological dad went to jail for like six to eight years and the mom got four to six, which is absolutely insane. So after this, my parents were quite strong and started up what's called a CASA unit. It was stood for 
court-appointed special advocate for children who were abused. And we had bills passed in Congress. But then my dad got injured at work. He worked with juvenile delinquents. And when he was trying to um, uh, hold down or pin down or stop one of the juvenile delinquents that were much bigger than him from fighting and try to calm him down, he broke his thumb. I know it sounds so weird, but snapped his thumb the whole way back. And he ended up getting this rare neurological disease called reflex sympathetic dystrophy because of that injury and because of what I think now from studying this that <clears throat> sorry I'm going uphill that uh the neurological issues were from the 100% deep vaccinations and the anti-nerve gas tablets he was given in the military and he had all the most extreme uh most extreme symptoms of Gulf War Syndrome, but it was also not allowed to be uh, brought up in court because when he did what he did in the Navy, we weren't considered to be at war yet, Gulf War. So my dad suffered for a very long time with a neurological disease that was basically degenerating his hand from the inside out. It spread from his thumb to his first finger to his middle finger and started going up his wrist. And it basically was like his hand was on fire 24-7 for years. The only way that they could treat it was mass quantities of morphine, which still didn't really do the trick. And to make another long story short, eventually he opted to have his hand amputated, which there was no promises there to make sure that this would fix the problem. But it did temporarily, although... I think I was 14 when that happened. It was very, very hard to watch your dad, that strong man in your life, go through such horrible pain and be just a shred of a man, and he couldn't help it, you know? And then to have a limb amputated, it was just another low blow for our family and trying to deal with something we never, ever fathomed would happen to our family. I remember when he came in from the hospital and his arm was all bandaged up because it was like halfway up uh, his uh, bottom part of his arm. Like from the elbow down to the wrist, it was halfway up. And it was all bandaged up really big. And I was like, are you sure it's not still in there? Because it looks like it might be. And definitely was not. It was just it was a horrible time. We got through that. And he was feeling very good for a little while. Doing very well. And... He kept going back to the VA hospitals to get um, checkups and treatments and medication, unfortunately. And um, during one of these routine visits, the doctor was trying to push his, he had an old military injury in his right rotator cuff. And the doctor insisted that he could push his arm farther with his range of motion and pinched a nerve in his right arm and he had his, already had his left hand amputated. And when he pinched the nerve in the right arm, the reflex sympathetic dystrophy disease jumped from his left side of his body to his right side of his body and then affected everything in between, all of his organs, everything. And that was his, de that was his demise. Um, he went downhill from there and eventually because of organ failure died in 2010 very slow agonizing death in between there as you can imagine my mom was just completely broken destroyed losing her son and my father losing the use of his hand and then being so sick for so long that in between there, several times she attempted suicide, and I was always the one that found her and that had to call 911 and had to figure out where her medicine was and count it, and usually I was the one that found her suicide note, whatever the situation was. It was just very...
very, very, very difficult time. My whole existence from about the age of nine till 2010 and past that was a huge struggle. You know, I wasn't that normal kid, you know, in high school or in school in general where, I mean, there's always that kind of trauma and gore and death and negativity in the back of my mind. And you can imagine how these sorts of things destroy a family. It wasn't just, okay, these bad things are happening to us, but we're going to band together and things are going to be okay. It, it wasn't like that. It was... It, it would turn family member against family member. Uh, it was, it was just brutal. I didn't live a normal life. I wasn't that normal kid. And on top of all of that, some of the other supernatural, strange going ons that were also happening to me while this was, I'm experience all this, these traumatic experiences. It just, it was never ending. Anyway, as things got worse with my mom, unfortunately, and she um, continued to fail to thrive. That's what I would consider it. She did not want to be in this world. She wanted to be with my dad and with my brother, and she continued to fight her own body, wouldn't eat, wouldn't drink water. Um, she cut herself, and she overdosed on medicine multiple times. The last time she did it, um, she was about to lose her apartment, and my dad was recently dead, and she took morphine patches and put them all over her body, hid them, like under her arms, under, between her legs, and took every medication she had. I mean, I think she was on antidepressants, anti-anxieties, multiple different kinds of pain medicine, and also these morphine patches that would slowly leak morphine into your body at, for three days. She had several of them on her body, and uh, she went to the hospital and she was in a medically induced coma for about uh, six days, something like that, seven days. She ended up losing all her hair, uh, respiratory issues, just, you know, long-term issues because of this. And then I, I had to deal with or experience putting her into multiple, um, multiple psych wards, admitting her. And she would get into a place and realize that she wasn't going to die and sh that they were trying to make her better. And she'd try to hurt herself in there, like trying to stick a fork in a light socket or trying to hurt herself. It was unreal. It was, it was just a nightmare. And she understands how this affected me. Mom, if you ever watch this video, I'm, I know this is probably very hard to hear. But, you know, it affected me and my brother to the point where sometimes it does help to kind of get it out there. And who knows, there are probably people that are going to listen to this that have gone through maybe not everything I have, but something similar, and might it might help them, it might resonate with them. And I guess my big point of this video, I only have about five minutes left of video, is that the reason why I ended up having the nickname Sunshine, and I know I missed a lot of in-between in this story, but I have a limited amount of memory, and it's hard to talk about. Um, I've learned to always try to react to things differently. I've learned to try to stay positive. I've learned to stand up for others, stand up for myself, and to research the lies of this world. Because there were a lot, a lot of lies told to my family, and those consequences destroyed our family. There's a lot of bad things that happened to us. And I, some of it I wish we would have reacted differently, definitely. But there's a lot of things that were out of our control. But humans in general need to research the lies, research the atrocities. Stop these things when you know it's something that's going to hurt others. And when it comes to finding truth in this world, that's why I do it. That's why I have the, all the groups that I have that I monitor and I try to keep them safe happy places where people can go and get away from this kind of shit in the world. This kind of shit that's being, that's happening to them and maybe out of their control. And put you in a position where you're around people that are going to understand and people that are going to help move you forward and not combat you and not fight you. Like some of these people 
you know, concerning the flat earth or any kind of conspiracies or any kind of truths that we are researching. That's why I do this. And that's why I have the nickname Sunshine. Some of my friends that know me personally and know that I've been through hell and back. And I've tried not to be a bitter person because then I try to do good by others and try to help make this world a nicer place for other people. It's because of these things that I've been through. I hope you guys understand. There may be a time in the future that I'll talk more about this. If it helps, I hope that you comment and share that with me. I, I hope you enjoyed the scenery. I came to one of the prettiest places that I know of. <clears throat> Just beautiful ferns, the sun. Of course, loggers back here with me. I needed some fresh air, and this has been weighing heavily on my heart. And I, I mention it here and there, and I think that the people that are closest to me that are going to watch this need to know, you know, what I've been through and why. Maybe I mention the things I do, and maybe why I am so adamant about being nice to each other, being nice to your fellow humans, because humans who disrespected and did not care about another human's life is why my brother is gone. It's why my dad was hurt and possibly destroyed from the military, and it's, it's why my mom did what she did. Now, she's responsible for her own actions, but it was a consequence and a reaction to humans hurting her. So I'm going to sign out. I hope that this helps. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them here. Please be nice. There's no reason to come on someone's page and destroy them with comments and be disgusting. There's just no reason. I love you all. This is Sunshine Out. As a little side note, I wanted to explain to everyone that my mom has made a full recovery. She successfully went through Narcotics Anonymous and is many years narcotics sober. I'm very proud of her. I just wanted to share that part because of it affected my life so. But I am very proud of her and I see the strong woman that she is and part of her strength is why I am the strong person that I am. I don't know if I would have handled losing a son and a husband like she did. I just wanted to add that very quickly in case anyone is concerned that my mom is happy and healthy and uh, struggles a little bit here and there, but I'm there for her. Um, so I thank you for everyone's concern. Like I said before, hope you understand, you know, why I uh, shared all this with you. Thank you for watching Sunshine Out.